Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Strange Love Live. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. This week's special guest is Gary Walter. Hello. How you doing, Gary? I'm doing great. It's been a busy day, but I'm doing great. It's been a busy day, and we're going to keep you up much too late. That's right. That's <laughs> right. But I'm okay with that. For the long drive home, right? Uh, it'll take me about an hour. Ooh. Yeah. I'll go up 205 to I-5 and to long, s- long view and then drop over to Rainier. Rainier. Mm-hmm. But you sort of go through Skipoos and St. Helens, right? Not if I go up I-5. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which, which it's better this time of night to go up I-5. Mm. Wow. Compelling, compelling talk about your blog. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that wasn't talking about your blog. That was instructions on how to get to Gary's house. That's right. That's right. <laughs> After hours party at Gary's house. That's right. Third Woo-hoo. house on the right. Be Look. careful not to wake the children. That's right. My wife will kill you. <laughs> I will not be the first person there. She's a lovely, lovely woman. I have no doubt that she could kill someone if they woke her up in the middle of the night. Yeah, she's. Sometimes I wonder. If she's going to kill the children when they wake her up. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke, everybody. Yes. It was a joke. But we're here to talk about things, and he might say like that, on his blog, mm-hmm. daddytude.com. Mm-hmm. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your blog? Well, <clears throat> um, let me think. See, we do these sound checks, and then I increase my volume. Not a problem. Talking. But um, I probably started blogging way back when it used to be called Weblogs. Web mm-hmm. blogs. Web blogs. Um, mm-hmm. Back in my CompuServe days, I probably started messing around with blogging. But uh, I kind of left it alone and didn't really get too involved in it. And I just started, I, I've always thought I would write a book. Mm-hmm. But when I was 21 years old, I figured, what do I have to say? And now that I'm no longer 21 <laughs> years old, um, I'm thinking I might have a few things to say, but I should get a little more practice in writing. So I just started messing around with it. Mm-hmm. And um, a month or two ago, all of a sudden it just hit me what my theme would be. And uh, I started focusing on daddy issues, and I registered a couple domain names. And, uh, man, the uh, the hits and the visits and the comments just started taking off from there. I remember your Twitter epiphany when yeah. you decided that would mm-hmm. be what you would direct. Yeah, you were online. You were, you were one of the first to reply to that I think mm-hmm. if I remember and that was very it was it was an exciting moment from the outside as well because I'd been to another blog that mm-hmm. you had written mm-hmm. and I knew that you'd been kind of struggling with where you wanted to take that mm-hmm. it was as someone who writes a blog and doesn't always know exactly what my direction is it was actually very exciting to see someone else find their niche is, it, is the other blog still in existence or is it just now the daddy to well I, I, uh, there's about six of them out there. Um, <laughs> sure, sure. One of them recently I had to start locking down posts because the wrong people were finding it. Um, mm. And um, I didn't want to put my career in jeopardy. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, and it led to some tears and some hurt feelings from people who I, I didn't know it was published, but it turns out I had links mm. in my blog role to the super secret blog, which never works well no. um so uh I, I there's one um that i would like to explore more and that's stories from my paramedic days mm-hmm. and, and some of the funny and interesting stories uh the some of the characters i met the bounty hunter the uh, uh just some really interesting people that i've met through mm-hmm. those times but um it does it didn't fire me up like the issues of daddytude um Well, there's nothing like what you're living in your here and now. Right. It's one thing to write about your past and to bring up old memories, but it's another thing to be in the midst of something and have that to talk about. It is. And and one of the things I see in our culture is absent fathers, Mm -hmm. Um, either geographically or psychologically or emotionally. A lot of of dads are distant. My dad, my parents never split up. They Mm -hmm. they were always together. But my dad worked 14 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So um, while he was a good dad... He was absent. And then with the divorce rate, what it is, and all those other things, uh, we, and there's not just that, but I think the whole women's movement from the 70s and 80s kind of confused men 
it left men not quite knowing correct what they were supposed to do it gave us a lot of liberation a lot of freedom mm-hmm. but it almost pigeonholed men a little more i think yeah which is not always a very popular i don't know i haven't opinion, heard that male female relationships are difficult or uh, anything uh, <laughs> right there, I, for the most part, I think people like yourselves, the, bar, mean, the Barbies and Kins of the world, I think you guys <laughs> oh, do really well. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, uh, Ken. Yeah. After hours, subject oh. number one. <laughs> <laughs> He's Ken this week? <laughs> Today. Well, Today, okay. this particular hour. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I remember, you know, just even starting to work with women in the, in the EMS field. Am I supposed to open the door for them or am I supposed to stand back and... Uh, some of them would give you an elbow in the ribs and let you know mm-hmm. where you were supposed to stand. And and those were trying times to grow up because you weren't sure, am I supposed to take the initiative? Does she want a leader? Does she want a follower? And, and I think a lot of men have just sat back with the remote, clicked on Sports Center and said, "Yeah, checking out. Yeah. And that's left kids... Um, at a disadvantage, I believe. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, not that I have it all figured out, but I've read a few books and uh, lived a bit, little bit of life. And being an older parent, uh, I thought, I'll just write about it. Mm-hmm. And particularly, this whole authenticity thing, mm-hmm. just to share, hey, I screwed up here. I had a victory there. This worked. That didn't work. And just put it out there. Now, I don't know if it, I, I read the post and I read the comments and the comments on this, this last is the post, most recent the most recent post on Dattitude. Yeah. Um, the comments were longer than the actual post. Yet they were. Um, and not just from the the readers and the commenters. You left a very lengthy comment as well. Right. Um, but I found it interesting and I can't remember where I found it. But what I got from it was something very similar to how I work on my blog. I am not at all afraid to out myself. Mm -hmm. I can say nice things about myself. I can say horrible things about myself, Mm -hmm. and that's okay. Right. Where my caution comes in is saying anything that might have someone, leave someone with a bad perception of someone else. Right. Or someone in my family. Because, you know, I could get ticked off at my daughter or at my husband or at one of my best friends. Right. And I could say something really snotty, and that person would understand, Mm -hmm. and they'd be like, yeah, it was a dick. Right. Uh, But other people then call you out on it Mm -hmm. or dislike that person for something that you've said. And you have an even broader range of it because you're dealing with people in your career life as well. Right. And that's where I got into trouble last week. Um, um, I had what I thought was a super secret leadership musings Mm -hmm. blog. And I knew a couple of my peers and some of my mentors were looking at it, but I didn't know I had any, followers here and we had gone on a camping trip with a bunch of people and um uh, it it felt like like we were kind of tagging along Mm -hmm. and neither my wife and i are good taggers along we tend to be alpha people Mm -hmm. and uh, um so in trying to wrestle with that i poured my heart out into this of the event that happened and um, I get a uh, Blackberry messenger from a good friend of mine and she's like ah I can't believe this you know I'm, I'm hurt I'm I'm breaking my my pack to never put anything in writing and I'm, I'm hurt and I'm broken and and she wasn't really a part of it but her husband was and, mm-hmm. and some other and um and I, I just felt horrible I was like, I blew it. Mm-hmm. I should not have put that into a public forum. Um, so I immediately locked it down, and she and her husband were the only ones that saw it. And uh, hmm. so, so that's that's interesting because you, you you know I mean these are blogs or public forums. So um, it sounds like you're you you've kind of searched for a certain role. Um, in other words, to to start a blog in a certain role, but you want to kind of segregate that away from certain folks. Um, Which doesn't I mean, that work. sounds seems <laughs> seems difficult in this totally connected social networking world. As I as I've discovered, as I've been discussing this with people in older generations, they're like, "Well, anything on the internet, anything electronic is 
is fair game. And I'm like, well, yeah. m- maybe, you know, I, I trust the cloud pretty well. And, right. um, um, my mistake here was that I actually had links in my blog role from the daddy Tude blog to this one. Right. And so I don't, I don't know if I accidentally hit add this to the blog roll or, or what happened, but I don't know how so, it got but you, there. You, I, no, I have, an, I, have an, I have a valid question. Do you think that your mistake, so there's three areas that this could have gone wrong. Do you think your mistake was the linking it, the actual posting it, or the not expressing it verbally to the people? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was the trifecta? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, I fully intended to discuss this with the people involved. Mm-hmm. Um, but like many of us, many of us introverted men don't get it right the first time we try to express ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so I tend to practice a little bit with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm really anti-gossip and I'm really anti-triangulating. I'm really anti-talking to people behind their back or, or about people behind their back. Yeah. But sometimes we'll have conversations with trusted people, our wives, and, you know, it was three o'clock in the morning, conversations where you're going, you know, and you and you bare your soul and, and you're like, wow, this is what a relationship's supposed to be. And, and they either don't get it and try to fix you or they just listen and mm-hmm. let you work it out. And that's kind of where I was going with that. Um, with um, here, here's some transparency with my wife being pretty involved with childcare. Um, I I need an avenue where I can verbalize myself, and and mm-hmm. her her plate's full. Yeah, it's not like she can stay up with me till two o'clock in the morning, and listen to me and yammer on about stuff because um, she needs her sleep, and so. I had this venue that I thought I could just process. Mm -hmm. Well, to talk about people behind their back in a public forum, that's that's pretty hurtful. Yeah. Yeah. And and that, and and I blew it. So I have a technical, so, so were you, do you write all your blogs under your name or did you have a number to to plume? I mean, is it, you know, I don't know if this, you know, to be honest, I don't know if my name is on there or not. Um, or is this, is this a, a blog you participate in or is this? No, no, this is, this is one of mine. And, um, um, WordPress allows you to protect it from Google searches. Um, okay. And so I had it protected that way. Uh huh. Um, whether that's I, I don't know how but again this is a blog for a particular audience correct no it's for it's mainly for a particular audience as far as my okay. mentors and my coaches okay okay yeah. gotcha i i'm not looking for a wide distribution gotcha um one or two people you know if i'm having a conversation with my brother and i say hey i'm struggling with something can you look at this and see what you think and it's uh, just a form for feedback mm-hmm. not for Right. Right. It's not a soapbox. Right. Okay. Right. So I think this is a very interesting conversation with you mm-hmm. because you have a pretty large social networking footprint, so to speak. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that you have um, this. This doesn't. This isn't critical. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is actually, you've jumped on a lot of different social networking. Tra- I think you're on. You, you've got friend feed. Uh, Jack, you tried the pound, Sprite strands, Kai, plurk. you name it. I'm a plurker. Uh, All right. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that in after That's hours, right. won't we? One of our Headless favorite animals. subjects. That's right. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you're. I mean, you're really out I, there. With, I, I dove you try, in. I dove try in. each one of those, uh, mm-hmm. which doesn't surprise me coming back from the old CompuServe days. Right. I think CompuServe was the social network at the time. It was. Or BBSs, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when I got tired of CompuServe, I started my own BBS, right? Yeah, that's because you're really cool. <laughs> yeah. Or old. Sure. <laughs> um, you bet. <laughs> um, but, um, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it seems to me the, the, the larger the social networking fo- footprint, the mm-hmm. more I know about you. Even if I'm a stranger, I mean, if I'm looking at your friend feed and, and all this, I mean, it's all kind of there. Right. Um, now, some of us... Uh, publish under names that aren't our own. Right. Um, although my parents really, really are proud that they gave me the name Doc Normal. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, but you know, I mean, I guess the question is, what? H- how do you see separating this social? You know, your your 
Facebook and your friend feed. I mean, because you're literally putting it out there, and you're trying. You're trying all this too. I, I see. Seems to me that you're providing an open book into your life. I'm trying to and because. As a sub question, do you think that that provides a false sense of intimacy for other people? That's a good question because. <laughs> but uh, take the first question first. Yes. <laughs> I just wanted to. It's a sub question. I just wanted to get it all out there. Ladies at once. and gentlemen, that's the first sub question we've ever had on Strange Love. This Bye. is, um, you know, actually, you guys need to be with like a big um, desk up there and. and McLaughlin. S- s- yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, and I, I'm, I sit here and sweat and. Issue one. <laughs> Turn to my attorney. And- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 60 minutes. You know, click, That's click, right. Click, click, click. That's right. Um, what was the question? The question, <laughs> I, in my previous participation on, on the web, I always used handles. Okay. That didn't link back to me. Sure. And, um, and I used a Yahoo email address, um, um, back bef- back when they were still cool, um, that had no, you know, I, I mm-hmm. didn't fill in anything mm-hmm. and and uh, secret. But but part of that was to hide some things in my life that um, were somewhat shameful, uh-huh. and I didn't want to put out there mm-hmm. um, because of the. Um, Did you were you still talking about that online? No, then, no, oh, okay. no. It was just uh, huh. you just didn't feel comfortable. Yeah, with yourself. Yeah, I see. And um, just just because of, of some of the stuff that I was participating in and and um, in my other sure. other life. Sure. And so uh, as I grew and 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 then moving to Portland and discovering Twitter and discovering, uh, hey, there, let's. Let's just dive into this. Other people are doing it. People don't seem to show any fear. The people I'm meeting, good, solid, intelligent people, are putting their lives out there. I like the idea of being authentic. And the difference is what we've found, at least uh, Cammie's brought this up in the show before, is at least in the Portland scene, Mm -hmm. uh, these social networking tools are actually bringing people in real life Right. together right yeah they're bringing people together online that's right but then they're moving that toward actual yeah meetings and, and relationships in, in reality exactly which like, is totally opposite from what we thought back in the CompuServe days. exactly right? exactly you know? except i still have three good friends from the CompuServe days oh there you go um one of them lives in michigan one lives in hollywood and um I don't know where the other guy lives, but anyway. Um, <laughs> a good friend. So even there, you had an inkling of social networking. Yeah, and and we did a meetup out in Newburgh years ago. And this was like in the early 90s or late 80s. We did a meetup. It was like eight or nine of us who lived in Oregon that were mm-hmm. participating in this one forum. And, of course, we didn't call it that then. We didn't know, you know. But, yeah. but oh, the other one, she's... Um, She's a teacher at the uh, at the deaf school in Vancouver, and uh, mm-hmm. um, and she's deaf herself, and so the whole internet presence opened her life to a whole world that she never had access to before. False intimacy. That is a really good question. Um, our society is filled with false intimacy. Correct. Everything from pornography to social networking to television to celebrities to whatever. Um, my first experience with false intimacy is when I was working at Life Flight. They never had males working there. Mm-hmm. And suddenly they hire 14 paramedics and all but one of us was male. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting around with these incredibly intelligent, incredibly talented flight nurses who had poured their life and soul into their jobs and did not have uh, relationships. And we'd sit up. There's nothing to do at night except sit around and talk. Mm-hmm. And I'd share stories and I'd talk about myself and I'd be open. And I began to realize that these women were bonding with me. And that wasn't my intent. Mm-hmm. I was just there. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, and so I think that sometimes when, um, when we reveal things about ourselves, especially to women, mm-hmm. that they, they, them, they, uh, they, <laughs> yes, right, uh, begin to feel that there's a connection, mm-hmm. the love connection, and that wasn't where I was going at all. I was just trying to be me, mm-hmm. and so that 
had never occurred to me um, until you just asked the question as far as the blog and all that kind of stuff. I, but, I saw some of that happen back in the old old day, in the BBS days. You mm-hmm. know, meet up and mm-hmm. people, and you know there'd be. I mean, it was it was. I mean, a, a lot of uh, and there were actually. Uh, BBSs, those were the dial-up bulletin right. boards for all you kids out there, um, uh, that were actually just for that, for a match-up and meet-up. Right. Yeah, but I was um, speaking specifically of not when you're trying to match up, not when you're meeting up, when right, you're just writing right. about your daily life. Because I know that, well, in my case, there are people who know, and someone pointed it out to me, there are people that know almost every aspect of my life just from reading my blog and reading my tweets. If you put the two right. together, oh my God, it's what Cami does every second of every day. Right. But one right. thing I think in, in Portland, we kind of answered, somewhat answered the question, talking about the fact that people are meeting up, you know, mm-hmm. via the blogs, via Twitter. There's a local connection, and then these people actually genuinely meet up and, and form a genuine Correct. bond. Except what I found out two nights ago is I have lurkers on my Twitter stream uh-huh. mm-hmm. that are being offended by what I have written. Hmm. But what you've written on the blogs or about what you've tweeted. Now, are these people you've met in real life? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, I'm sitting in a school board meeting. Uh-huh. And um, it, I, I'm all about vision and mission and moving mm-hmm. forward. And we are talking about whether we should spend $25 on something right pencils or yeah anything. and this conversation goes on forever and i I'll just get the 25 bucks out I, of my wallet exactly and so exactly. i guess i guess tweet this is the most yeah inane meeting i've ever been in, in my life well somebody at that meeting read that post did not address me but mm-hmm. it talked to somebody else about it who then talked to me and told me that that person was hurt so they actually saw it Mm-hmm. It, they actually had their mobile and saw it. At no, not at the time, but they. Oh, they, oh afterwards. Yeah, afterwards. and and you know my tweets go onto Facebook. Yeah, um, well that's and friend and, feed. Yeah, and uh, Facebook is probably the number one place where some of these people are are working. Uh, I see. Yeah, but I also so they're not really on Twitter, and this this starts to get into the tech yeah. piece of it. Yeah, but they're they're not really monitoring Twitter, but they are your friend on 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 Facebook, and right. they're, they're seeing those updates. Interesting, and yet. So I get this complaint, and it bothers me that they were hurt because mm-hmm. I don't want to hurt anybody. I, it, it'd be no different than you're sitting in a staff meeting at, at work and you lean over and go, "This is stupid." Yeah, you know, two things I don't do: I don't do that at work, mm-hmm. and I don't Twitter during meetings at work <laughs> as much as I want to. Right? Gosh, as much as I want to. There's my Twitter stream would be prolific, but. But I don't. It would be bad. It would be bad. When I was still living in Colorado and my brother and I were going to the same staff meetings, uh, we'd do these mountain retreats and uh, they had Wi-Fi up there. So we Precious are... Wi-Fi. Uh, we'd sit in the back of the room and we didn't even have to sit next to each other anymore. We just IM back and forth our mm-hmm. comments and we'd converse over these silly departmental meetings that were going on. And, um, and it's rude and it's... Yeah. It's not professional. Well, and uh, it kept us awake. So and, uh, there was a meeting that Miss Burroughs and I were at. Yes, that I, I actually left the room at one point. We were sitting near each other, IMing, mm-hmm. and giggling happened. But, and I got up and left the room because I was afraid she was going to get in but trouble. But this new kind of the new the new meeting. I mean, these conferences and these things we do. I mean, there's there's a whole Twitter stream, Ustream things coming out of those conferences when we get together and have these conferences. But right. non, of at a non work conference, it's, it's not unacceptable. Well, but I mean, these are these are just like you would go to conferences in the past without that and pay attention to the speaker. There's definitely a new I hate using that word paradigm but I can't think of a better word for it, where you actually, there is a back channel right. to what's being presented. Right. And for those who are monitoring that, who are interested in that, who aren't there in the room, can actually get information right. back from that right. and understand what's going on at and, the time. And we really saw the pinnacle of that at, at SXSW. Exactly. Um, and South, uh, Southwest. Southwest. Yeah, and, and I wasn't there, but but the whole controversy where that one person got shouted down via Twitter and right. and uh, I was fascinated by that because mm-hmm. well that was kind of the coming out of Twitter I think it was the f- well it, no it was, it was just just this last year that but I think it happened the year before okay. as well which was the initial kind of launch okay. people can correct me if I'm wrong mm-hmm. the year before and then it hit stride again the next year and then that's when I think Twitter just blew up 
quite and, literally. <laughs> and so, so now when I make presentations, I actually encourage people to do that. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, you don't, because I, I try to lead in the in the discussions. I don't, I don't lecture. I discuss mm-hmm. and I facilitate. Well, some people don't have the the courage to raise their hand in front of a hundred other people. Exactly. And, and so I'm saying, I am me. You know, yeah. um, send me a message and and I'll deal with that. And and I'm fine with that. And they're saying, well, isn't it rude if, you know, if we're not paying attention and we're doing that back and forth? I said, if I can't hold your attention, then th- th- then that's my problem. I just think, yeah. you know what, um, in my mind, I was taught that that was very rude. Mm-hmm. I mean, just like talking on a cell phone or right. simply, I mean, it, it, so where I was brought up, it's rude. Right. But you have to observe human behavior over time right. and how humans use technology. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, as cyborg anthropologists might say, um, um, <laughs> and, they, and you know, is this, she on? Is she on? I don't. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, I'll have to check. Okay, but um, the 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 thing is, is that um, you know, this is what's happening now, right? And this is the situation you're you're in, mm-hmm. and you can't really put a lid on it. So, what does it mean for us as you have this back channel going? And I think there are positives to it, right? As there can be negatives too, right? You know, yeah, I, I I agree, and I um, it it wasn't proper for me to say this is a stupid meeting because it's not like me leaning over to you and saying, "Correct, you want to get out of here." Well, um, but it it but what maybe, if because I because I'm broadcasting the, yeah. it to my 300 and some followers on Twitter and my couple hundred followers right. on Facebook and wherever else that goes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but surprisingly, but forget I, about the negatives. I get more positive yeah. feedback from my tweets. Yeah. I have people all over the country, people I used to go to school with people that I used to work with people that I know from various areas that are mainly on Facebook because that's where the average, uh, non, the, non early the user adopter level. is. Yeah. Okay. And, and they're, they're sending me messages. I love your, they, they refer to them as updates because I think that's what Facebook calls it. I, right. I, I love those. I, I, you know, I send pictures and, and they just love it. I think Tarosi had an opposite experience because I think he recently took his Twitter feed off of his Facebook. Yeah, updates. I was just going to say several people in the chat room have actually mentioned that they've taken their Twitter feed off of their Facebook, that it's just not sure. valuable. But what I was going to say is, you know, sometimes maybe maybe it is a you know maybe the presentation is a little lagging, lagging or something. In 140 but, characters. But maybe <laughs> the back channel actually has some of the better content. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the back channel actually could enhance what's going on. And you and I were talking about that at lunch last month or whenever we got together. Mm-hmm. And and people at Beer and Blog tonight were talking about. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I hope you have good things to talk about. And I said, all I am is a catalyst to what goes on. In the chat room, mm-hmm. that's that's sure. all I hope to be today. Is, I is love a to read the chat room. That's my one of my favorite things. I didn't get to do it last week well, because I had to go to bed. But after every show, I go and I swipe the the chat room from Doctor Normal and I read it before I go to sleep. Because well, all kidding, all kidding aside, I mean, as as much as I kid, I mean there is content here, yeah, as well. Sure. Then but then you the also have awesome. a ch- chat room, which is enhancing and maybe going off into some other content or people are posting links or something you know? or when we start droning on about mundane topics and they they take off and sure. mm-hmm. you know okay, obviously tonight that's not happening but that never but happens. no we're very no. interesting <laughs> we're terribly interesting so, um let's talk about you know i, I want to get back to the tech thing okay what is what's your favorite tech I mean, what's the thing that you're using right now? I mean, it could be social networking, could be something else. But what what is it that it's really uh, hitting? I mean, like I said, you're the guy, you know, I mean, I see your tweets and it's like, oh, I just installed this. I'm trying mm-hmm. that out and stuff, mm-hmm. which is great. Thank you for doing that for me because I can vicariously watch you mm-hmm. fail well, as you, <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. Right. No, but uh, w- what's really got you jazzed in the tech world? applications, things you're seeing? Um, that's a good question. You know, one of the reasons I never pursued my career in uh, tech support, which I did for two or three years when I was in California, was I got tired of watching little blue bars creep across the uh-huh. screen. Uh-huh. And um, But I do like to fine-tune my PC as my cockpit to life 
and get that PC operating in a way that I don't have to worry about it. So mm-hmm. I, I, okay. So I'm going to break in here. Mm-hmm. So your PC is really your information hub. It is, which is interesting mm-hmm. because to me it seems like the trend is away from that PC onto our mobile devices. Your BlackBerry, right. My iPhone, the next thing that's coming out mm-hmm. next year. Android. And 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 I feel that. Um, you know, we're going to Lincoln next week for 10 days, and I'm tempted to not take my laptop. Um, sure. But the idea of answering all my email with my thumbs uh-huh. doesn't right. appeal to me because I get even less verbose than 140 characters, and that mm-hmm. just creates more miscommunication. Um, but my laptop is an old two-processor Dell that weighs about 300 pounds, and uh, it's just a pain to drag yeah. on the air, airplane with my kids and strollers and you're not dragging your pc around all day but you are dragging that around that's all right day. Mm-hmm. your that's blackberry right. now today i drug the pc around i've been in i, I did i did some work at uh, green dragon and then when i left there i went over to uh, uh albina press and uh, you know and it's just it's where i can put my outlines together and i sure. can work on yeah. stuff and um so i think that if i could get a macbook I would probably nice. that would be that would uh-huh. become my sole machine. Um, but right now, I have a six-year-old PC that I'm trying to keep running. Oh yeah, that's so yeah. so yeah. I've moved I've moved yeah. to a Linux system. And uh, are you getting better performance? Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. It it crashes, but I don't mind crashes because uh, it boots so quick. Uh huh. Oh, that's, that's nice. That's yeah. good. And what 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 distro are you running? Uh. I'm not sure how to pronounce this, and it doesn't always come out of my mouth right. Ubuntu. Ubuntu, Ubuntu yeah. Ubuntu. And, we have uh, a new Ubuntu computer in our house as well. Do you? Yeah. Yep. So, somebody told me the reason it crashes so much is because it's so user-friendly. Um, mm-hmm. It's okay with me. And right now I'm trying to get my iPod to work with it. And Oh, now that's... Tricky, tricky. The tricky thing. Yeah. When you start connecting... I can see my iPod. Products. I can see the data yeah. on the iPod. And then this is going to be my next project because it's learning how to sync those. Yeah, yeah. sometimes is iTunes giving you trouble. There's no I, iTunes, iTunes. Yeah, it doesn't run. There's on no, it. I, no yeah. open source yeah. iTunes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So. and um, and and people have synced their BlackBerry with it. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. But fortunately, with Google Sync, I'm okay. My I use Google as my calendar. And That's good. Um, okay, so so Google the Google Cloud apps would be yeah. also a necessary. And that's why that's why this is sufficient in so many mm-hmm. ways. Um, I can't edit my documents on Google Docs, mm. but I can right. create one and email it to myself. Sure. That's good. And, and there it is. So Google Docs, the cloud computing, mm-hmm. Google Calendar, Gmail, of Go- course. Google owns my soul. I <laughs> mean, <laughs> okay. I, mean they, I have three um, Google Apps mm-hmm. uh, domains and, uh, and then just my personal one. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Everything I everything I know is on Google. And how about how about uh, friend feed or any of those? Are those really necessary apps? Uh, Twitter, friend feed, anything else? I, I mean, something you can't live without. I don't really use friend feed. Okay. I was when Twitter was having problems. Okay. But it's there. It's kind of a collector of mm-hmm. all my stuff. But I don't really use it. And I, Twitter. Twitter. Twitter's a very integral part of my life. I love uh, my Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such a stupid name, but I, I love it. It's You know what? It's much less stupid than Plurk. <laughs> it is. And Fail Whale. Yes. <laughs> well, um, well, that's great. I mean, it's just... Uh, so cloud computing is really... So if you can get into Ubuntu and cloud computing, you'd be happy. I, I'm, not, I'm not creating any new documents on my PC except an occasional um, graphic or something like that. For, for the most part... It's cloud computing, and I can pick it up wherever I am. That's nice. It is very nice. It is very nice. I love my computer, though. Yeah. Well, this has been a lovely, lovely talk. Thank you. Thank you for much, so much for having us on the show. For having <laughs> us on the show. Thanks for having us on the show. Wow. Thanks so much I, for coming I on I the hope show. that you can come back again sometime, yeah. you and your lovely husband. There we go. Yeah. Uh, next week, we'll have Steve Woodward, Oregonian Steve, on the show. Join us then. Awesome. And check out Gary Walter at uh, www.daddytude.com. There's no W's. Yeah. There's no w's. Oh, no W's. Oh, just no. daddytude.com. Daddy
Thank you, Gary. Yeah, thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you.